TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel has launched Operation Wavesbreaker to contend with a latest wave of deadly terror attacks which claimed the lives of 11 Israeli civilians. Iran blames the United States for the suspended nuclear negotiations in Vienna, which the Ayatollah regime insists is pending a political decision of Washington. U.S. Special Envoy for Iran Rob Malley says he is not confident that a nuclear deal with Iran is in fact imminent. Israel has launched Operation Wavesbreaker to contend with the latest wave of deadly terror attacks which already claimed the lives of 11 Israeli civilians. Upon conclusion of a tour of the IDF Judea and Samaria division over the weekend, Defense Minister Benny Gantz stressed Jerusalem's resolve to provide security for the citizens of the State of Israel. I אנחנו נמשיך לבצע מעצרים ויוזמות בהגנה ובהתקפה ונשים את ידינו על מי שמבקש לפגוע באזרחי ישראל בכל מקום ובכל זמן. Jerusalem's top defense official who held a comprehensive security assessment together with the IDF Central Command Commander Major General Yehuda Fuchs continued by urging the Palestinians to maintain calm which would enable Israel to follow up on a series of humanitarian measures were prepared ahead of the Muslim month of Ramadan. Separately, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett held a comprehensive situation assessment of his own with the director of the Israeli security agency Shin Bet, Onen Bal, and the IDF Central Command Commander, Major General Yehuda Fuchs. Prime Minister Bennett further noted that in a joint operation of the Israel Security Agency, the IDF and the National Police Counter-Terror Unit Yamam, an imminent terror attack was successfully prevented over the weekend. <laughs> כמו הפיגוע הזה, יש למחבלים כל מיני רעיונות, ולכן אנחנו בדריכות על גם שבק, גם צהל, גם משטרת ישראל, לזהות כל שביב רעיון או תכנון לפיגוע, כדי לסכל את זה מבעוד מועד. גם פה, לאורך קו התפר, צהל בנוכחות C במאות נקודות של פרצות, והמטרה שלנו היא לשבור את הגל. The prevented terror attack, which Prime Minister Bennett referred to, included a militant cell belonging to the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which sought to execute an attack similar to the murderous acts of terror that claimed the lives of 11 Israeli civilians last week. <laughs> החיבור לתשתיות ג'יהאד אסלאמי בג'נין הביא בסופו של דבר לזה שהצלחנו להתחבר לחוליה בשעות אחר הצהריים החוליה השתלבה בתוך, בתוך תהלוכה של חמושים במחנה הפליטים, במחנה הפליטים ג'נין ובשעות הערב אנחנו מבינים שהחוליה אמורה לצאת לבצע פיגוע בטווח הזמן המיידי בתוך תחומי הקו הירוק Upon the moment of interception, the Imam Special Operatives thwarted the vehicle's advance by targeting its tires in accordance with the rules of engagement. Nevertheless, the Islamic Jihad cell of three militants refused to heed calls for their surrender and opened fire toward one of the Imam operational teams and managed to wound four of them, including Chief Superintendent S, who sustained severe injuries before the terror cell was successfully neutralized. ארבעה פסולים הגיעו לבית החולים, שניים קל, מציאות רסיסים, נפגיעות נפגעו כבר אתמול ושחררו. שניים נשארו לשפוט בבית החולים, אחד פצוע קשה. פצוע קשה יותר, יש נזק? אני מעריך שלא צפוי נזק בטווח הארוך. 
Police Commissioner Yaakov Shabtai subsequently met with the Imam Special Operations Service member, Sergeant Major B, who sustained light wounds to his legs. <laughs> Meanwhile in Jerusalem, since Friday, which marked the first day of the Muslim month of Ramadan, violent public disturbances have been recorded in the vicinity of the old city's Damascus Gate on a nightly basis similar to events which took place during the same period of last year. Therefore, in an effort to prevent the situation from escalating, riot police have been ordered to prevent illegal gatherings, which call for violence and disturbances at the terrace which engulfs the Damascus Gate. <laughs> At the culmination of last night's incident, 10 Arab rioters were arrested on allegations of attacking police officers, during which one policeman sustained light injuries. Separately, amid the heightened tensions and ahead of next week's Passover holiday, Israeli Foreign Minister and alternate Premier Yair Lapid toured the old city of Jerusalem, including the flashpoint Damascus Gate, where he was briefed on the situation on the ground. Turning to the Iranian capital Tehran, where Iran's foreign ministry spokesman Said Hatibzadeh rebuked the Biden administration for the suspension of the nuclear negotiations in Vienna, which the Ayatollah regime insists is pending the political decision of Washington to remove the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps from the State Department's designated list of foreign terrorist organizations. Mr. Biden and the Kaukas did not take the decision of the Kaukas. And unfortunately, all of the issues of the Kaukas and the Kaukas همون روی کردی رو داره پیش میگیره که منجر به شکست بسیاری از توافقات بین المللی شد. In contrast, the Iranian leadership has at least publicly rejected any U.S. demands regarding scaling back the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps' aggressive behavior throughout the Greater Middle East region and beyond. طبیعی هم هستش که ایران و ایرانی نمیتونه از حق و منافع خودش بگذره ما ملت صبوری هستیم اما تا ابد صبر نمی کنیم و منتظر هیچ کسی نمیمونیم It is important to know that Iran's foreign ministry spokesman echoed previous remarks made by senior Iranian adviser Kamal Harazi a former foreign minister of the Ayatollah regime who insisted that the matter of delisting the RGC was a national priority for the Islamic Republic and stressed with conviction that an agreement pending U.S. capitulation remains imminent. Yes, uh, it's uh, imminent, but it depends on the political will of the United States. It was the United States which withdrew from the deal. IRJC is a national army. And a national army cannot be listed as terrorist group. And certainly it is not acceptable. That is very important for Iranians. Iran's optimism, which was voiced last week at the Doha Forum in Qatar, was seemingly echoed by the European Union's High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Josep Borrell, who acknowledged that the obstacles to reviving the 2015 nuclear deal have nothing to do with the core issues of the agreement itself. 
the first thing to do is to avoid Iran becoming a nuclear power. GCPA was working well until the unilateral withdrawal of the U.S. under the administration Trump. And now we are very close to an agreement. And I hope it will be possible because now we are discussing about collateral issues that have nothing to do with the core of the nuclear deal. So I think I can bring a hope. But uh, the work has been hard and we are reaching an end. In contrast to Iran's expectation that the United States will eventually capitulate to its demands, U.S. Special Envoy for Iran, Rob Malley, noted last week that while nearing the end, Washington is not confident that a nuclear deal was in fact imminent. We're pretty close to deal, but we've been pretty close now for some time. And I think that tells you all you need to know about the difficulty of the issues that remain. But I could say the sooner we get back into the deal, which is in our interest, and we think, we presume in Iran's interest, the more faithfully we implement it, and the more we could build on it to address other issues between us and Iran and between Iran and the region, the longer, the more sustainable, the more solid, and the more beneficial, mutually beneficial the deal will be. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's Daily Prayer Initiative, I would like to encourage you to persist with prayer for the situation involving Russia and Ukraine, for their people's salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Nelson, wishing you a Shavua Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.